worried that your long-term fishing kayak storage may actually damage your kayak? Well, most people don't actually know how to properly store a kayak long-term, so watch this video all the way through, and I will make sure that you don't have a disaster come spring when you pull this bad boy out and start fishing again. All right, let's go. Hey guys, my name is Darren. I've been fishing for over 30 years and specializing in kayak fishing since 2018. And this channel exists to help kayak anglers across the nation level up their skills, grow in their knowledge, and achieve their goals as kayak anglers. If that's you, I would love to invite you into the community. Hit that sub and you're in. All right, here's my tip number one. I highly recommend, if you can, storing your kayak inside out of the elements. So what this does for you is it gets your kayak out of those UV rays that will really break down your polyethylene kayak over time, making it more brittle and more susceptible to crack at your pressure points. Pro tip here is just make sure if you do store it inside, make sure it is far enough away from any type of heat source. So for example, my kayaks up here, I got another one right here, I'm getting ready to put that up on a hoist, but I'm looking up on my ceiling where I should put it. And definitely if you have some type of Mr. Heater in your garage, you're not gonna wanna place it in this vicinity. And tip number two, if you absolutely have no way to store that in a garage, in a barn, in your basement, and you have to go outside, I recommend avoiding two things. And the first one is this, leaving it open to the elements. And number two, storing it deck side up. All right, so what a lot of people will do, let's take their kayak and let's place it on the ground somewhere in their backyard behind a barn out of sight, which is a problem because you live someplace like where I do up here in Northeast Ohio, the Caribbean of the Midwest, what you end up happening is you get this freeze, unfreeze, freeze and unfreeze. And if your kayak's sitting on the grass or in moisture, essentially what you're gonna be doing is expanding and contracting, expanding and contracting. And what will happen is that come spring, when you pull that kayak out and go fishing again, you realize that you have a crack. And what happens to your kayak when you leave it outside is similar to what happens to, say, a hot tub. Look at this one right here. And I even protect this thing with 303 protectant. We have cracking over here, cracking over here. It's really bad over here. And this is what's gonna happen to your kayak if you leave it out fully exposed to the sun. Some tips here, if you have to store it outside, definitely try to put it underneath a deck if you have one under an eave, under a UV resistant tarp, or simply just put a tarp over. So if you have to store your kayak out back, not a problem. A great way to get it off the ground is putting it on saw horses, but a couple recommendations here. Number one, make sure that you don't store that deck side up. A lot of these kayaks are extremely heavy. Those fishing kayaks, those roto molded fishing Fishing kayak sometimes can run. I think mine's bare is 65 pounds up to 150 pounds, and they're not designed to have all that pressure over a long period of time sitting on it. And what you end up having is potentially a warped or deformed hull come spring. So the recommendation here is simply flip it over and rest the kayak on the gunnels, which are the rim of your kayak. Which brings me to tip number three: unless you want your kayak smelling like a big old musty bucket come spring, I highly recommend against wrapping up like a burrito in a tarp. So the recommendation here. Is you want to allow that to breathe, allow the moisture to kind of get out. So the idea here is to create a tent-like structure of your kayak with that tarp or whatever you're using, allowing the water to flow away from your kayak and allowing that kayak to breathe. All right, tip number four, if you are storing your kayak in a garage, in a barn, outside, I highly recommend stripping down your kayak to the plastic. I recently had someone comment on my videos saying that mice got into a seat and absolutely destroyed it and used it for nesting material. Some of these fishing kayak seats, I know my native Slayer Propel 10, a new seat is $230. So I highly recommend stripping it down. And guys, mice, all these critters, they'll eat the rubber hatch on your kayak, they'll eat your bungee cords, strip it down to the plastic and do yourself a favor. All right, this brings us to tip number five, keep it safe. Guys, if you're storing your fishing kayak outside, thousands of kayaks get stolen every single year so take the extra measure and lock it up i always recommend going the extra mile in purchasing say a set of apple air tags just make sure you hide that air tag someplace inside that is very difficult to find very difficult to get to in case someone decides they want to take that fishing kayak from you so this is how apple air tags work essentially they work off of bluetooth and anytime someone who has an apple product there are millions of them out there walks by or comes within range of your apple air tag it will ping to you in your phone where it's located can you imagine the sweet satisfaction of filing that police report and also saying oh yeah by the way I know exactly where it's at. All right, tip number six, if you're storing your fishing kayak inside, there's a variety of different options for you. You have your hoist, which I have right here. I actually just purchased another one. These guys from Rad Sports. And if you're interested in the install video of that, I'll throw it in the description below. You have wall hanger sling mounts, wall mounted racks. And if you have a room, you got portable stands. You can also DIY these. And you'll also see a lot of upright storage options. This is something I don't recommend. Once again, that's a lot of weight to put on the bow or stern of your fishing kayak. And I just personally don't want to 
risk it. All right, tip number seven, if you are storing it inside and you, if your kayak is not being fully supported by some type of hoist all the way around and it's sitting on a rack, once again, turn your kayak over, let it rest on the gunnels and you won't deform your kayak after a long term storage period. All right, tip number eight, let's talk about fishing kayak carts. These things are great for getting your kayak to and from the water, but horrible storage devices and will put pressure on your kayak where it was not engineered, designed to have pressure. Please do not leave your kayak stored on a cart long term. All right, tip number nine, some of the options that I spoke about require strapping and you don't want to over strap your kayak, especially over the long term. What could happen is you could apply too much pressure and come spring, find out that you have a crack or deformed kayaks. All right, here's another tip. Make sure you don't hang your kayak from the handles. Now, logically that makes sense, right? You might be thinking, oh, this kayak was designed to be picked up from the handles. Why can't I hang it from it? Well, it was designed to be able to pick up the weight for the short term, however, not for the long term. And if you decide to do that, that prolonged weight over time could cause a lot of damage to your kayak. And if you're storing your fishing kayak long term, it likely means it's the off season for you. So if you want to stay connected with the kayak fishing community, I have a live show every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. called Kayak Fishing Obsessed, where I host guests from around the country to talk about something we all love, kayak fishing. And here's the playlist with all the recent shows.